Hey there folks. Uh, so I want to try and briefly cover updating the firmware on the RetroPixel Pocket uh, because the process is a little bit not intuitive um, and there are some gotchas that I, 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 I've been trying to follow people uh, working on this, you know, trying to update it for themselves. And there are a few gotchas that quite a few people seem to be hitting uh, and even though I posted a text guide it doesn't seem to quite affect them um, but anyway just for the sake of the video here is what firmware we're starting with this is not the release firmware that these retropixel pockets shipped with uh, by the way mine is in a prototype housing but the actual internals are from a retail unit um, but anyway it's I installed the 1.01 .01 firmware or whatever. Uh, but anyway, let's get on with the actual update. I am 100% sure there is a better process for this, but this is what I figured out now and this is what works. Uh, you're gonna need at least three different things, not counting your retro pixel pocket and a USB cable, but you're going to need a computer for this. Uh, I had the best results with Windows 10. Um, Windows 8.1 and earlier don't seem to be compatible with one of the two drivers um, and Windows 11 and presumably later aren't compatible with the other two driver uh, the other of the two drivers uh, so Windows 10 was the only system I was able to get both drivers working consistently and properly on you need both it is a requirement if you do not have both your device will just reboot to a black screen and that's where it stays until you power it off. Anyway, so to tell if the first driver is working, oh, and by the way, I would highly recommend if you can have a dedicated machine for this because we do have to install um, some sketchy software and use some sketchy drivers. Um, Windows 11 should work, but you have to disable core isolation memory integrity feature first. Um, because one of the drivers that we install is explicitly incompatible. So you'll want to turn that off, then reboot your computer, uh, and then the steps should be the same as Windows 10 so far. Uh, but first thing, let us get, let's go to Funny Playing's website, funnyplaying.com. They just kind of revamped this site here. Uh, so things are in a little bit of a different spot, but you want tutorials. And then right now, it is the second most recent. I will, of course, have a link in the description below. Um, but their tutorial kind of sucks, and I'm not really happy with Phoenix Suits tutorial either. Uh, but either way, this has all of the handy links. Uh, so first one, we will want Phoenix Suit. Uh, click that link, scroll down. I'm going to use V1.10. Uh, and here is where having an ad block is absolutely a fantastic idea because there's about eight different download buttons on this page and I've already forgotten which one is the correct one. Okay, so this this start now one is the one you want, but if you have um, an ad block enabled, this is probably the only one you'll see and I highly recommend having an ad block, but this computer is a fresh install of Windows. I have done absolutely nothing other than um, set up the drivers and install Windows updates so that I can do this without interruption and that I can screen record. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, once you've got it downloaded, I went ahead and downloaded it in advance. Uh, you'll just get a zip here. And then the other thing we want, we can close that tab and this tab. We also want the firmware. I'm going to go ahead and install the 1.1.2 version. Uh, I have, of course, also already downloaded this. This might take a little bit because it's a bigger file. Uh, the software to install this is about 15 megabytes. The actual firmware image is over a gig. It's, oh, I'm sorry, it's 770 megabytes. But either way, uh, go to the Google Drive page, click download, and then click download anyway, and it will download for you. Uh, the Phoenix Suit software comes in a zip file format. You don't need anything else to open that. Uh, but the software image for the RetroPixel Pocket is in a 7Z file format. 
Uh, so you'll need software like 7-Zip to go ahead and extract it. Uh, but once you've got something like 7-Zip installed, just double click, double click, and then we will extract that image. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in my downloads folder because there's nothing else in there. It doesn't matter. It's going to ask me to overwrite because I already did that. And then we will do the same thing with the Phoenix Suit software. Same thing, just going to dump it in my downloads because none of this matters. Okay, so now that we've got the software prepped, let's make sure the drivers are prepped. Uh, so on your computer, if you right click on the start button all the way on the lower left hand corner, you'll get this menu here. We want device manager. And what we're going to make sure of is when I plug the RetroPixel Pocket while it's on, um, home menu is fine, just make sure it's not running any games. Go ahead and plug that bad boy in. Let's set it off to the top here. Actually, I'll set it right on top of my screen. Uh, we want to make sure with Device Manager open that there are no unknown devices popping up. Since there are known, no unknown devices popping up, I am confident that the ADB driver is working. Uh, now, the ADB driver is one of the two drivers that we need. Uh, for whatever reason, it just works out of the box on Windows 10 and 11, and I couldn't get it working at all on Windows 8.1 and earlier, even using Google's drivers or the included Phoenix Suit driver. Uh, now, the other driver we can't really test without using Phoenix Suit, so I'm going to go ahead and start that up. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be Phoenix Suite, since Suite is S-U-I-T-E. Uh, oh, there it is. We're looking for phoenixsuit.exe. I'm going to run that, confirm the UAC prompt, and it should start right up. Now, another confirmation that our driver is working is this page will go from device not connected to showing device info about our specific device. Uh, so that's how we know it's connected. Uh, now from here we can do a couple different things. One of the neat things is if we go over into the APK tab, we can click Recovery, and it's going to reboot the RetroPixel Pocket into its built-in recovery mode, uh, where you know, if, if you've ever messed around with an Android device, it's going to look pretty darn similar. Um, there we go. Just like that, and we can navigate with the volume uh, rocker here and then use the power switch to select. Uh, unfortunately, the recovery does not appear to be set up properly or the firmware releases aren't set up properly. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, so if you just take one of the zips that you get from uh, Funny Playing here, if you just take this file, you, you can't flash it on the device. Um, I have tested, you can put it on an SD card, put an SD card in here, and then try updating it. Uh, unfortunately, the zip isn't signed, or either it is signed and this thing just doesn't know to look for the proper key, so we can't update it that way. That being said, uh, as soon as someone, probably third party, gets this figured out, that's gonna make updating a heck of a lot easier um, because rebooting into recovery, as you saw, took very little actual effort, uh, and then it's just a matter of a zip on the SD card. But unfortunately, we're not there yet, so I'm going to go down here to Reboot to Bootloader. And I'm going to plug this bad boy back in. And oh, I don't know if it booted to the bootloader or if it went right to the system. I think it went right to the system. Oh, nope, it went to the bootloader. Excellent. So now that we're in the bootloader, you can see that there is this unrecognized device. We're going to go ahead and hit Update Driver. Hit browse my computer for drivers, oops, and you click browse because we want to navigate to the folder that we downloaded, uh, Phoenix Suit, and in there there's a drivers folder, and that will go ahead and grab the driver. But there's going to be one more step after this. Once we hit next, uh, oh, it doesn't find it. Interesting. So there's yet another driver. That's fine. It looks like there's another bootloader mode that the uh, all winner chipset uses. Um, I was mistaken on that. So there are three three separate drivers. Uh, we don't need that one though. 
So let me get this thing back in its normal mode and we'll try again. That was a tangent that just ended up wasting our time. Anyway, go back to Phoenix Suit, uh, wait for the Retro Pixel Pocket to connect and finish booting, and we see all the information we want. So now let's try updating. Now this isn't going to work because we don't have that second driver set up that I keep talking about, but we're going to try anyway, and we'll just walk through the steps. Click on the image button, we're going to find the image that I unzipped. Uh, in my particular case, it's this Retro Pixel Pocket 720x720 720 A64 Android 7 release V1.1.2. Um, and then we can leave this box unchecked and hit upgrade. And if I hit yes, it should reboot my device into the bootloader. But again, we don't have the driver set up. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Unknown device. So from here, now we can hit update driver, point it to that folder, C, downloads, uh, Phoenix suit drivers, and then it should grab the driver, but it's going to give me a warning that the driver is unsigned. Um, now, if you anticipated this, you know, you, you read the instructions I put in the, the description there, you'd have known that you should have already rebooted your computer into unsigned driver mode. I have not rebooted this one into unsigned driver mode yet. We hit install anyway. It installs, and interesting. On Windows 11, we needed unsigned driver mode, but we don't need that here, I guess. Now that it's installed, Phoenix Suit has popped up, and it's asking me if I want to format the device. I highly recommend, recommend you hit yes and format the device. If you do not format the device and you do an in-place upgrade and something breaks, you're going to have to start this process over and then click yes on that again or do a factory reset from within the device. I don't know if the factory reset works, um, I haven't tested it, but if there's an issue, the best way is to just roll back from scratch. So why not just start from scratch? Um, of course, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but realistically, there were um, text instructions that mention this in the description. Uh, also, you should probably watch through this entire process before actually attempting it yourself. Um, this is going to wipe your device. If you have any ROMs or saves on it, consider them gone. Make sure you back them up before you even start this process. Because, and again, if you choose to not format your device and you update it and something breaks, you're going to have to format it anyway and at that point you won't be able to back it up because something's broken. Uh, now anyway, while this is running, this is going to take a little little bit to run. Um, it takes about, you know, 10 minutes all said and done. Really not that bad. Uh, once this is done, it's going to reboot the device again, and then the device has to finish installing the update, yada yada. Anyway, this process really isn't that difficult. Um, look at that. It took a minute 17 seconds to upload the firmware. Now it's going to reboot. And while that's rebooting, let's talk through this a little bit. Uh, so Phoenix Suit does appear to use ADB on the back end. Uh, I have messed around with this a little bit. Not too in-depth. I'm not really an Android guy. Um, I just dabbled enough to get myself into trouble. My keyboard has disconnected. Give me just one moment to reconnect it. Uh, gotta love these old laptops. Oh, is it still not working? Cool. Cool. Well, we've got a touch screen. That's fine. Um, yeah, it uses ADB on the back end, so I'm sure 100% sure someone who knows a little bit more what they're doing with Android devices, uh, all winter devices specifically, uh, this device uses the A64H SOC. Um, I'm sure someone who knows what they're doing can just write a script that scripts out this whole process, uh, you know, installs the two drivers, pre-stages them if need be. One of them should probably already be staged if you're using Windows 10. Um, but 
you know, stages the two drivers and then just sets up the, the reboot through ADB and the flash through ADB. I'm 100% sure that's a thing, but I just, I don't really want to mess around with it too much uh, because I'm sure someone who knows what they're doing already knows of a better way. Uh, but this is what Funny Playing gave me as far as updating goes. Uh, unfortunately, their instructions left quite a bit to be desired. Um, so I had to do a lot of this research myself, but I wanted to get this out there because it's not very intuitive that you need both of those drivers. Because uh, you think, you know, you plug it in and it just works. Oh, well, the driver's are already set up. No, there are... <laughs> There are at least three different drivers I've showed. I have no idea what that third one is yet. Um, it's not necessary for the update process, but regardless. Anyway, here is what the Phoenix Suit tool shows now on this device. I wasn't paying too much attention to the versions, uh, but let's go into the settings here and check it out. Uh, of course, the Android version hasn't changed. I don't expect that to change. Same thing with security patch level or anything like that. Um, kernel version, build number, yeah, all that. All that looks about the same to me, except that the date on the kernel build is now July 12th instead of um, whatever it was before. I don't know. You'll have to rewind the video. Um, it wants me to connect it to Wi-Fi. I don't want to do that right now. Uh, but anyway, this should also factory reset it if your device is having some problems. Um, again, what, whatever each of these updates does is going to depend on the specific update at the time you install it. Uh, I'm not going to do too much in this video to go through the actual software and see what's changed, uh, especially because I now have no ROMs on this device. Um, going into this, I didn't have any ROMs. I kind of expected this to happen, but I just wanted to show off. Uh, the update process in general because quite a few people seem to be struggling with it. Um, so that being said, highly recommend Windows 10. Um, it actually went quite a bit smoother than I expected. I, When I initially updated this device, I used a combination of a Windows 11 and Windows 8.1 device because uh, like I said, I couldn't get both drivers working on a single machine. Um, and so on my Windows 11 device, I had to reboot it into unsigned driver mode to get that um, that second uh, bootloader driver installed. I thought that was going to be required for Windows 10, but it turns out it actually goes quite a bit smoother with Windows 10. So, that being said, highly recommend uh, Windows 10. Um, yep, my keyboard's not working. That's cool. Um, highly recommend a Windows 10 machine for this. Uh, a dedicated machine is probably the way to go, uh, just so you can you know, be a little bit more comfortable about installing some sketchy software and sketchy drivers. Because uh, now that I'm done with this, I can just format it and, and work on something else if I want. Or just keep it around for this specific thing because I'm not going to actually use this computer normally anymore anyway. Um, but otherwise... Oh, no, we don't want that. It's in advanced options. Oh, no, that's where it is on Windows 11. I don't know where it is here. Let's see if I can get it working, or is my keyboard done? Yeah, my keyboard's done, I don't feel like trying to do a workaround. Um, if you do a search in the settings option for uh, optional updates, there should be a drivers section. You might be able to pull the drivers from there for this thing. Uh, you will, of course, have had to plug it in before they will show up in there, though. Um, Otherwise, that's about it. I hope this helped you. Um, if not, at least walk you through the process. It's not that difficult, and quite frankly, it's it's pretty foolproof. If you mess up something on here, you can always just reflash it back from the from the start. Uh, the the bootloader and recovery are built into the chipset itself. They're always going to be there, uh, so I guess they're always going to be effectively a backdoor into the device. Um, it is what it is, but, you know, that's a double-edged sword. Because it's so insecure, if we ever brick it, we can easily unbrick it, that sort of thing. Uh, but either way, that's about all I've got. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, links in the description. A uh, couple things before I go. 
first and foremost, if you're having issues with this process or your RetroPixel Pocket in general, I'm not funny playing. I'm not affiliated with them. I can't help you if I wanted to, and in a lot of cases, I don't really want to help. Um, this I run this channel as a hobby, and this sort of stuff is fun to me. Tech support, not so much. Uh, so if it's not working for you, sorry about your bad luck. Try and review my video a little bit more. Maybe you'll find out where you went wrong. Um, or maybe there's some sort of software or hardware incompatibility. I don't know, try a different USB cable. Try a different USB port. On this specific computer, I only have the one USB port. Well, technically the two, but on my Type-C port, I'm running video capture right now. Anyway, um, try a different USB cable, try a different USB port, try a different computer. If you're using a virtual machine for this because you, you took my words to heart and aren't using a dedicated machine, uh, make sure your USB pass-through is working properly. Um, I know VirtualBox can struggle with that sometimes. Other virtual software tends to be a little bit easier. Something like Hyper-V, I think you'd have to pass through an entire dedicated USB card and then plug things directly into that. But Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, you'd need a dedicated PCIe device for that. Anyway, moving on. Getting distracted. Uh, one more thing. In the description, I'm going to have my, my text walkthrough of this. It's almost entirely the same process, uh, but a little bit more well thought out because um, this was kind of unscripted and mostly off the cuff. Um, whereas the text guide, I have the benefit of hindsight for. Anyway, and the last thing, Funny Playing has given me the source code for the OS that goes on this thing. I'm guessing it is the source code for the version we just installed. Ah, my laundry's done. Um, the 1.1.2 version or whatever it was I've totally forgotten already um, doesn't matter yeah 1.1.2 I will go ahead and link that in the description below it is a mega archive it is from funny playing um, if for some reason it goes away I'll try and get it re-uploaded I do have a local copy though I have not uh, actually verified that that's what is in there it's quite a big download um, about 15 gigabytes. Looks like it includes some other tools needed for com compiling. Um, I don't know, but either way, they've assured me the source for this thing is in there. Uh, so if you're the enterprising type and you want to port a different OS to this thing, hopefully everything you need is in there. Um, please try and link back if you can, just so we, you know, keep things a little bit more organized. I'll see I want to get a GitHub repository set up for this thing, but I, I'm not familiar with Android enough to say this is what we need to upload and this is what we don't need to upload, and GitHub's not going to be happy with me uploading a 15 gigabyte um, zip file, so we'll work it out. Work in progress. Anyway, here's what I got. Thanks for watching. Links in the description, etc., etc. Um, keep on being awesome. Catch us all next time.